Hello and welcome to another episode of Yule Acres. Today we're going to continue on talking about our soil amendment series by talking about peat moss and how it can be used not only in your soil mixtures but also help to improve your garden. Let's get started. Before we get into our main topic of talking about peat moss, if you like what we're doing, if you're gaining value out of these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, click on that bell for notifications. Not only will it help us out with the YouTube algorithm, but it will also help us to continue to spread these videos with each other so that way we can continue to learn from each other. Now, when you're looking at peat moss, peat moss is a very great, highly absorbent carbon-based dead plant material used to really help bulk out soil amendments. It's predominantly used in seedling mixes. It's often used in raised garden beds for help with water retention. Sometimes it's used in garden beds themselves to help with general garden retention, but also to help with over time the carbon breaking down. Now, Peat moss over time has become more and more readily available. By far one of the largest sources of peat moss comes from the peat bogs in central Canada. But if, or, over time there's also been other sources like Northern Ireland, Germany, Sweden, Finland. Whatever there's a location where there's dead detritus material kind of decomposing with a large cold environment peat bog area, that's typically where you're going to find your peat moss. And that is one of the great things about it is it is a very large readily available resource. That's what makes it so great is because it's so widely available, it's also very cheap. Kind of give you an example, in my own personal area, I can actually find at the big box stores small bags of peat moss for five to six dollars for an eight to 16 quart bag. Or if I go over to my local farm and ranch store, I can actually find large three cubic foot bales for only $16. It is a very cheap material for a significantly large amount. That's why I absolutely love it. And there's a reason why it's become one of the predominantly large, most popular materials in the world. Not only is it lightweight, it significantly helps with water retention, but it also is a neutral pH balance material, which means it's not going to greatly affect your system, whatever you're working with. It has become prized as a soilless media to not only start with your seedling mixes, but also for hydroponics, as well as other materials, just in bulking out many soils. Aside from all of those great benefits that we've talked about, we've already started on it a little bit, but this is a peat bog material, which means it comes from the swamps. That is by far the most beneficial attribute of this material, is it holds onto water very, very well. It loves holding onto water, which makes it absolutely perfect for seedling mixes when you need that water retention. Now, let's go ahead and we've talked about some of the great pros of peat moss, let's go ahead and talk about some of the negatives when you're dealing with peat moss. We already mentioned that there is no nutritional value to it, which can be a positive and negative part. Now there is a thought process with peat moss that because it is a detritus plant material, you are mining out of the ground, which to some people say that it is not a sustainable process or a product and that is why over in recent years coconut core has become a little bit more prized for the ability because it's seen as a little bit more of a renewable resource that can be used as a great substitute for coconut core coconut core peat moss they're both going to be plant-based fibers that are going to be relatively similar in their water absorption rate However, the difference is, is that coconut core is going to be a lot more plentishable by getting from the fruit rather than harvesting from the ground level of that peat moss itself. One other side note is I did mention that peat moss is about neutral, but in some cases, depending on the source of the peat moss, it can occasionally be slightly acidic in nature, but in my area where I have very basic soils, that's not always a bad thing. But on average, that slightly acidic soil is gonna, or slightly acidic nature of the peat moss is going to be so minor that it's not going to greatly affect it in most cases. One other potential downside to peat moss is even though it has a high 
retention level of water, that can actually also be a potential downside as well. By having a high retention, if you don't have proper drainage, by potentially adding some perlite, vermiculite, something like that, to help with a little bit of drainage, if you have just straight peat moss, then you could potentially have a boggy situation where the plants could potentially die. So that could be a good thing and a bad thing. Now, in talking about the potential environmental factors where the harvesting of peat moss is not an environmental situation, there is some validity to it, but over the past couple of years, that actually has been challenged by many people. Now, in according to the environmental science and biology professors in the United States on this viewpoint, it can be considered not sustainable. As a general rule of thumb, it takes 15 to 21 years for one inch of peat moss to form. So peat moss is replenishable at a relatively fast rate in comparison to other carbon-based materials like coal or oil. It is not like oil that it takes millions of years in form in able for you to harvest it. You simply have to make certain to harvest the peat moss at a slower rate than it is produced for that to be considered sustainable. Now to combat this claim that peat moss is not sustainable, a study by the Canadian Sporangium Peat Moss Association looked at how much peat moss was harvested versus how much was produced naturally. Canada has over 281 million acres of peatland, which makes up a total of 25% of the world's total land area of peat moss. Of that, a total of 41,000 of that, a total of 25% of the world's total land area is peat land. Of that, a total of 41,000 acres is currently being harvested. According to the study, they have harvested 60 times less than is produced. Or put in another way, they are harvesting 2% of the peat moss rather than that which was produced on an annual basis. In shorthand, according to the Canadian Sporangium Peat Moss Association, given that source for what it is, I tend to think it's a relatively reliable source. In shorthand, that means they are harvesting less peat moss than is being produced by a large margin. And so as far as the Canadian peat moss supply is concerned, it's considered a renewable resource. Now there has been another study done by Utah State University in trying to do a comparison between peat moss and coconut core, trying to see which one is going to be much more highly beneficial. In a side-by-side -side comparison underneath hydroponics, they found that coconut core was actually less beneficial from the peat moss and the reason for that was because where a lot of the coconut core is stored in southeast asia they're actually stored in the ocean saltwater areas and so that coconut core soaks up a lot of that salt water meaning that coconut core has a high amount of salt content making it potentially not beneficial and when i've done my own growing and tried coconut core first peat moss i have actually noticed this exact same problem that is one of the reasons why I personally chose to do peat moss. Not only do I personally believe that it is actually sustainable if you harvest it in proper means, which is why I make certain to source it from proper sustainable sources for peat moss, but I also can't handle that high salt content within my greenhouse, within growing my herbs. They just can't handle that high of a salt content. And that will greatly degrade the quality of my herbs when I go to sell at farmer's markets, when I go to sell at grocery stores. And so that's why I personally chosen to do peat moss. However, coconut core peat moss are both overall very great high quality products. It just comes down to your own personal choice. Now in a similar side by side comparison done by Auburn University, shortly around the same time that Utah State did theirs, they actually found that coconut core and peat moss worked equally well as long as the coconut core was thoroughly rinsed out or came from a source that did not have high salt content. Shocker, I know. So Utah State found some salt content from coconut core that had high salt content. Auburn was able to find some that didn't. So as long as you're able to find coconut core that does not have a high salt content, you're going to be okay. But on a side, comp side comparison, whatever your personal benefit is,
really doesn't matter. Just whatever you choose to do. I personally do coconut. I personally do peat moss. But I've also done coconut core a lot of the time too. It's whatever I have on hand. It just so happens that in my particular region, peat moss is a whole lot easier to acquire than coconut core is. This has been a review of peat moss and the soil amendment and how it can be used to better help improve not only your soil, but your garden and the benefits that it can have. So let us know in the comments below. Do you prefer coconut core? Do you prefer peat moss? Let us know what your personal preference is and why. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad that you were able to be here. Once again, if you're gaining value out of these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, click on that bell for notifications, and we look forward to seeing you next time.